I took my little boy out for his football today and he scored four goals. Kid's going to be a frigging wonder. Archie Peters, you've heard of it here first. <laughs> Welcome to the Bible in One Year podcast brought to you by Two Breads and a Bible. If you like the idea of a casual yet meaningful chat about the Bible with a couple of meats, listen in. Something here could be good for you. Today is day 210 covering Isaiah 5, 6, 7 and 8. If you need a brief overview of those chapters, they're in the description. Well, just got to immediately uh, go with a that's good for the accent. <laughs> uh, usually I warm into accents, but this is our first uh, first episode of the evening. And I was like, just going to dive straight in with it, go with a nice home nation. Uh, ironically, one of, well, not ironically, but one of the best accents, even without any practice, just straight in. Very, very good. It's... Very convincing. If we've got any Scottish listeners, feel free to critique the accent, but, you know, that's what you sound like, so... <laughs> I don't know what else to say really yeah. um, I think it's uh, I think it's you to go first old Bean um, yeah you had a sort of an unlabeled point um, is that showing up later yeah it was well, kind of just that section they call in my bible they call it the song of the vineyard oh uh, yeah I see it beginning of chapter 5 yeah um, do you want I to mean, talk about it we're here now yeah might as well so yeah song of the vineyard uh, devastating it's just really depressing to see um just the terrible sort of need to 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 prune and weed and burn and get rid of of you know these terrible trees that are obviously symbolic of the israelites and just bad people that produce no no nothing good really and then it links to jesus because jesus talks about how only good trees can produce good fruit right and really the only good fruit we ever produce is once we're clo- cloaked in his righteousness so you know i love those jesus references here in um isaiah so there's one of them yeah no totally bro um i kind of like just that early bit because it's like it's one of those points where you can do everything right but there's no guarantee that life will be right um yes. like he what does it say? He talks about in verse two, he dug it up, cleared it of stones, planted with the choicest vines, built a watchtower, cut the wine press, looked for the good, uh, the crop, the good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. And it's like, no matter what you do, there is still an element of, there's no guarantees in this life, right? Right. Well, I, and that's why I said it was devastating because to me, that's God. God has done everything right to, to produce good fruit and yet we're bad fruit. That's, or maybe, you know, so. that, that's good. Thank you. Love that um yeah the the sort of the point i picked out as well out the back of that was verse eight where it says woe to you who add house to house and join field to field until no space is left and you live alone in the land and it's just that is such a reality where we live at the minute in sort of southwestern ontario i don't know about for yourself in texas but like it's just everywhere is housing complex housing complex housing complex like taking away farmland taking away everything it's just cramping everything and it's just like it's like one of my favorite golf courses in woodstock they closed it like knocked it down for housing it's like come on guys like just yeah. it does my head in me yeah it makes me feel grateful for where we grew up obviously because we had lots of green green belt land right like land that couldn't be developed or whatever yeah. and lots of fields and westwood park obviously where you had many good football birthdays and cricket birthdays and those are good times Kind of links to your day to day, doesn't it, mate? Yeah, it does indeed. Played golf today and took my little boy out for his football today, and he scored four goals. Kid's going to be a frigging wonder, Archie Peters. You've heard it here first. <laughs> so then, moving into five eleven, uh, Isaiah five eleven. Woe to those who stay up late at night till they are inflamed with wine. And I just quickly reflected on that because that is woe to me, really, because I used to stay up late drinking and all that crap when I was younger. And it really wasn't good. So, you know, it's always interesting when it talks about people who drink, who drunk too much. And it's so messed up because obviously I wasn't an alcoholic exactly or anything. But like, you know, I love to drink and I couldn't seem to just have one glass of wine or one beer. Right. Yeah. It'd be five or ten or whatever. So yeah. not so good. Yeah. We both fell into that category for a little while. Um, well, I love my translation says, woes to those who are heroes at drinking wine and champions at mixing drinks. And it's just in the culture, when you're in that drinking pub culture, you're a hero, you're a champion. If you're great yeah. at mixing drinks, you're great at drinking. But actually when you step out, you're like, I'm just a bleeding drunkard, <laughs> just an idiot. Yeah, uh, well, what's crazy about that is that crosses over thousands of years as well, because 
we would call each other heroes and champions and lads what are lads you know or whatever so so yeah that same thing is is still a problem today as it was exactly. and i guess on that as well you think you're a hero in your own eyes but that's just the alcohol talking too right so, yeah yeah it is um i'm going to jump into a really poignant point which is something that i pulled out years ago it's just something which was really stuck with me in isaiah 6 verse 1 it says in the lord king as i died i saw the lord seated on a throne high and exalted and the train of his robe filled the temple which is obviously a a prophecy towards um what's the bleeding revelation there you go that was a mind line. but what i love about it and what filled what sort of just jumped out to me years ago was actually the story then in luke where there's the bleeding woman who fights through the crowd just to touch the corner of jesus's cloak effectively yeah and it's like she went through such hardship such difficulty just to be able to touch the corner of his robe but now we read that the train of his robe fills the temple and yeah. so like no matter where we are it is accessible to us yeah. and that healing power and that everything that comes with that is just a fingertips reach away yeah and it's just the two linked together and i was like wow that's really cool yeah. um so yeah dude i i don't know if this is legal but that's also good and there's a you know I guess the first one was really for an accent more than a yeah. biblical knowledge, but yeah, that's so cool, man. Um, I love those kinds of those kinds of moments, those like serious wow moments, because you know Isaiah is like what a thousand plus years before Jesus, something like that, and and it might be in the six hundreds, I think. But right, okay, but fair enough, centuries before, and yet yeah, just I love it. Uh, one of the classic ones now from Isaiah uh, six verse seven with it he touched my mouth and said see this has touched your lips your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for obviously referring to a hot coal that touches isaiah's lips right uh, so this is a revolutionary idea at the time right so rather than the sin and dirt covering up the holiness of something the holiness rather actually washes away and wipes and cleanses the sin and dirt and obviously all of this points to jesus it's completely the opposite of what the hebrews would have thought of the the jews at the time right and that's why the pharisees and sadducees wanted to get away from you know all the the so-called filth and whatever of prostitution and taxpayers and whatever that jesus was just chilling with when he was here yeah so cool isn't it yes very cool it's banging. Uh, and then the very next verse isaiah 6 8 and i said here i am well basically then i heard a voice the lord saying whom shall i send and whom will go for us and i said here i am send me he said, mm. don't tell this people. And it's just like, that is such a dangerous prayer. Amongst like youth groups and stuff growing up, that was always something which was mentioned a lot. Like, where are the people that are going to then go and be those um, those spokespeople effectively for yeah. the world? Um, but it's such a dangerous prayer. When you pray, here I am, send me. It isn't saying, send me to these places. It isn't saying, send me at these times. It's just an unconditional send me. And right. part of that is like, where are you that you can be sent? Are you in a place where you can be sent from? Right. You can actually do that and fulfill that. But yeah, it's just one of them little verses that growing up was always a, here I am, send me. I have a note from 2013, which is the where am I part, right? It's just, yeah, all that. Love that yeah and it is a very dangerous prayer in that sense right yeah absolutely right what's funny is that no one's ever really ready to do god's work god makes us somewhat ready in that sense right but i love that um just a quick one from isaiah 8 verse 21 this is my last note for today distressed and hungry they will roam through the land when they are famished they will become enraged and looking up we will curse their king and their god so it kind of to me reminded me of something that uh frank who is doing this bible in a year with us outside of the podcast obviously said before right when you're in a season whether it's good or bad clearly this is describing a bad season ask god what you should learn or do in that situation rather than cursing him for it or asking to be taken out of it absolutely man that is that's top i love that um one last thing just we've got a couple of seconds to throw it in was a quick point from isaiah 7 9 right. where it's actually saying in there if you do not stand firm in your faith you will not stand at all and it's yeah. like that is the root that is where you have to be strongest otherwise the rest of it's just going to crumble so yeah oh, that was that nice. you, tomorrow's reading is isaiah 9 10 11 12 so why don't you beautiful people pick up your bibles and get reading in the meantime, please consider joining us on social media at Two Brits in the Bible and sharing this with some lovely, wonderful, beautiful other people to help spread the word of God.